Taito Ward, Ruler of Shangri-La, Part 1 One day, I realized there was a specific point in time I'd simply never moved past. I couldn't see what was ahead of me, and had no idea how to make any progress. I couldn't tell what was wrong, nor how to make it better. This uncertainty gave birth to impatience, anger, and fear. I just wanted someone to give me answers. Then, a single thread of hope appeared strung up before me, an almost imperceptibly thin thread just for me. It was a convenient miracle, leading me to believe that grabbing hold of it may actually bring about some change. If you saw a thread of hope in front of your eyes under such circumstances, would you be able to resist pulling upon it? <laughs> Morning already. Wait, where am I? I can hear something snoring. What's this? <laughs> I feel soft and... Uh, oh, buddy, it's you. Good morning. Uh... Kiha? Uh, where even are we? Why am I here? Oh, that's a silly question. I live here. A Kiha Gongin nonchalantly scratches his head, as if it's the most obvious thing in the world. Don't you remember what happened? Okay, you two. When the photographer gives a signal, strike a pose. No prob. I can do poses. How's this? This look good? Akia Gongyan nods enthusiastically, wearing the costume Katobopas brought for him. Yep, that's perfect. Ah, this is wonderful! You two look so amazing! Jeez! Together with Akiha Gongin and Katoblapas, you find yourself striking poses as requested, having a really fun time. Look this way, please! <laughs> Alright, perfect! Thanks again for this Katoba boss. We got some really choice shots today. I especially like the... Uh, talk to me please. Don't want any more trouble now, do we? Uh, it's fine. We're not going to touch his hair or anything this time. We promise. We won't look at his face either. All our base interests seem to have vanished for some reason, actually. Now we're satisfied just showing you on. It almost feels like we've attained enlightenment or something. Wow, your sacred artifact is amazing, Akia. You're so at peace. You sure this isn't brainwashing? Hey now, buddy. Watch it with that kind of joke. Let's not go giving me a reputation for brainwashing people, hmm? All my sacred artifact does is let flames burn themselves out. That means it's nothing at all like enlightenment, I'm afraid. Just the natural end of a fiery passion. So if you kindle the embers, that flame is liable to start right back up again. Cthulhu, boss. If you really love cost me so much, there are business opportunities we'd like to introduce you to. Are you interested? Uh, I appreciate the offer, really, but there's something I'd like to do before considering anything like that. I see. That's too bad. Have you ever changed your mind, though? Here's my card. Feel free to contact us anytime. Even if it's not business related, that line is always open should you have anything you need to discuss. Anybody else feel embers being kindled? Back this train up now, fellas. You cut the scouts off once more before they have an opportunity to get too close to Kotobopas and spark another incident. We'll be sure to send you copies of the photos we took. 
Best of luck in your continued cosplay pursuits. Oh, glad that didn't turn into a whole big mess like before. Thanks for the save, Ayrton. Katobapas has a quick flash of recollection when the crowd knocked him around, exposing his eye. He instinctively lowers his head. Ah, it was no trouble at all. Glad you could enjoy cosplaying, though. And it's fun for me, too. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that, Ayrton. By the way, Katobapas, you mentioned wanting to do something. Oh, that? Um, promise you won't laugh? I want to take all of my favorite costumes and make a cosplay compilation ROM of myself. Uh, cosplay ROM? I guess that makes sense. Cosplay ROM, huh? Never heard of it. But then, you could fill a library with stuff I don't know about. Uh, easiest way to explain it is like a digital portfolio of cosplay photos and videos that you can sell or give out. I'm grateful to have been accepted into the Akihabara Guild, where so many manga artists and creators I admire belong. But I have yet to create anything original myself, so I'm not sure if I'm really worthy of my membership. So, that's the challenge I want to tackle next. The only problem is, I'm still a little scared to do it alone. <laughs> I've tried it a bunch of times before, but I always somehow lose the resolve to follow through and wind up shelving it. That's why I've... Uh, there's something I'd like to discuss with you both, Akia Gongin. Arathen. I feel like it's some kind of fate that we've come together here, and was wondering if you'd like to make this cost wrong with me. His entreaty comes across with a mixture of determination and desperation. I've actually prepared costumes for all three of us. If it's okay, I'd love to see if they fit you two. Like, right now. And that's how you wound up here, at the Youth Fire Brigade Station, that also doubles as my lodging. I spent all night getting all fitted and measured and stuff. Ring any bells, buddy? Akio Gongyan recounts the events of the previous night as he gets changed into his work clothes. Hmm, now that I mention it, I think I remember. All of that feels like a dream. Uh, how many times did we change last night? Oh, so many cosplay friends. So happy. Katolpas interrupts your thoughts with a bit of well-timed sleep chatter. A big smile on his lips. Haha, <laughs> sounds like Katolpas had a good day. Oh, but hey, it's getting late. I gotta go. Hmm, where are you going? Do you have somewhere to be? Yeah. School may be out, but fire training has no days off, and they got a part-time job to boot. You can ho hang on to one of the spare keys for this place, though. You're welcome to stay here anytime you'd like. And I recommend you do. It'll cost you a fortune to stay out of the share space night after night. Oh, don't worry. That's totally okay. We're buds, so it's cool. Nice. Free lodging. Okay. So, what should I do today, then? I uh, guess first, let's wake up your total pass. After a bit of rousing and some morning preparation, you and Kotopo Plus leave Akia Gongyan Station and head out to town. Still a ton of people out. Are they all here for the event? Um, I just wanted to say... Sorry about yesterday, really. I feel like I pressured you into joining me on this cosplay venture, and that it was actually a nuisance for you. Hey, we're all in this together. Thank you, Ayrton. Plus, I have no means of doing laundry, so having tons of options is good. <laughs> uh, it means I can just stay in costume. Uh huh? You plan to stay in costume? Like, no street clothes? Um, if you don't mind me asking, are you like, hiding out here or something? Hey. Did he hear a rumor going around the net about that student from Shinjuku Academy? 
You know the one. Yeah, I heard most of the recent violent incidents had something to do with him behind the scenes. Yep, he apparently ran off to some other town. Scary to think you might be right in your, your own backyard. Supposedly, he'd been toying with all the most influential players in the game all this time. That's a bit worse than I thought. Hmm? The passerby, sensing something off about you, unconsciously turned their head in your direction. For a moment, there's tension in the air. But just as quickly as they notice you, they dismiss you and continue on their way, chattering with one another. Thankfully, they didn't catch on as to who you are. <sighs> they didn't realize. That was a close one. Um, Arthur? The passerby may not have noticed anything suspicious about you, but the same cannot be said of Katoblopas, who is now staring directly at you with a very concerned expression. Could it be that the person they were talking about is... I mean, it just kind of adds up, you know? I had this feeling, since the moment we met, that you are hiding something. While cosplaying, you showed me the same sort of fear and unease that I often feel. You came to Akihabara to run away from something, didn't you, Arthur? What are you, uh, consider telling me about it? I'm happy to listen. And I won't judge. Very quick to jump in and explain everything. Uh, wow. Okay, I see. That sounds really rough, Arathan. I'm sorry I didn't tell you earlier, but... Do you believe the rumors about me? Have you heard of them before? I hadn't heard those rumors before, and I don't see myself believing them anytime soon, knowing what I do now. I mean, I don't think you could ever be so manipulative. There's a lot that goes on in our lives, and some of it is entirely beyond our control. Katoblopas takes a moment to lately feel under his bangs before looking back at you. So yeah, I choose to believe what you're telling me, and that your feelings are genuine, Arthur. Just like you believed in me. I guess you could say I want to return the favor. <laughs> wow. Arson. Katobopas instinctively reaches up to cover his eye at first, but then laughs and lets his guard down, responding in kind to show your affection. You know, I can't believe I forgot how comforting it is to have someone willing to protect you. It brings me joy to see you happy like this. I'm glad I get to help comfort you as you did me. But, um, would you mind if I ask you to clarify something for me? The fact that everybody seems so eager to believe in these rumors, do you think some role or rule is at play here? Uh, I don't know about that. I think there's something more to it than that. Like, amplifying credulity in some way. Your mind recalls how things have been since the attack at that night. It's not just app users on Transients who are buying into those rumors, but the regular citizens of Tokyo as well. That's true. Which means whatever influence is affecting the people has been spreading even to those who aren't using the app at all. So, it's not just limited to the app. It's spreading through some other means. But how? And where? Oh, don't worry. I'm not saying I don't believe you. I'm just saying something is really fishy about all this. I could understand if it were something like my role or rule. Katolopas's eye has the power to indiscriminately enthrall all who behold it. This makes his role and rule particularly potent and frightening. But these are just regular old rumors, spread the old-fashioned way, right? People can take or leave them as they see fit. Even if a clairvoyant proves they can predict the future with perfect accuracy, some contrarians will still refuse to believe them. Some people might even refuse to believe in something simply because the person they dislike is into it. Yeah, don't we know it from- <laughs> this is a bit uh, topical from at least the, the previous Crisis we had in real life. 
One rumor spread to a thousand people will surely never be perceived the same way by all thousand of them. So, you're saying there's some kind of trick to it. Well, the thing is, despite the rumors spreading so far and wide, our guild has never come upon them as far as I know. What? That's really unusual. It could just be because we aren't interested in guild battles like so many of the other guilds out there, of course. I mean, I've heard about the fights to capture all the portals and stuff, but that all seems pretty foreign to me. I wonder if it, maybe our guildmaster has heard about all this, though. Your guildmaster? Um, well, to be honest with you, even I've never met our guildmaster before. You'll have to wait one more chapter for that. But I really do hope I'll get to you soon. I just admire our guildmaster so much. Yeah, our guildmaster is someone only those with an extensive portfolio of creative works have the chance to meet. That's actually part of why I really want to make this cost rom. I want to meet the legendary creative who is our guildmaster. Well, don't get your hopes up too high. Even with the portfolio, I've only been allowed an online chat through an avatar. What kind of creative works has our guildmaster been involved with, you ask? I'm sure you've probably heard of some of them without even knowing it, Arthur. There's that famous manga, that net anime, that AR app everyone's talked about, and that video ad campaign to name a few. Oh, not to mention this mobile game a lot of streamers have been playing recently. You know what? Kuniyoshi points to a game poster hanging on the wall nearby. Tango told me about this game, actually. That one, super popular, huh? Hold on a minute. You're saying our guild master made things in all these vastly different fields on his own? Manga, unmade programming, video production, and gaming content, all by the same solo creator, and all wildly popular? Can one single person really be that proficient in that many fields? Are they what you call a wizard? Seems like this person's pretty gifted. I think you kind of misunderstood me. There's only one thing our guildmaster created personally. Huh? It's the guildmaster's children, so to speak, who've made the pictures, games, videos, and all of that. Right! The big boss just has one very specific area of expertise. Making AI, artificial intelligence. Specifically, AI designed to make other things. Wow, that's a pretty big feat. Indeed, the Akihabara Guild is well named, as it is a gathering of creators by one who's devoted to creating creators. This collective of artificially intelligent avatars can replicate and iterate upon itself virtually without limit, found only by the system specs containing it. By constantly learning from gathered information, these AI avatars can produce creative works on virtually any genre or, or medium imaginable. This also enables them to tailor their creative endeavors to each individual recipient, allowing for true personal and user experiences. Well, looks like it's my turn now. The mysterious figure thinks back on the salvation he bestowed upon his homeland. To those who needed it, he heard their pleas, extended his hand, and preached the sermons they so desperately desired. He gave his undivided attention to one individual at a time, saving them fully before moving on to save the next. Uh, I'm not sure I like the sound of saving. And so, he came to be adored, worshipped, and revered. In all the many worlds there are, only a select few beings can boast of having saved such a great number of people. Though I reign supreme both above and below the heavens, there remains but one thing out of my reach. A lord of the Ashuras, who has fallen to the realm of strife, and whom I once called friend back in Shangri-La. 
This time, at long last, I shall save you from this endless cycle of death and rebirth. Ruler of Shangri-La, part two, with a battle in a wide map featuring just mobs. We also have Smoky God with us, who is level seated. Let's proceed. Two shadows dart east from Kabuki Show in Shinjuku Ward. They bound from rooftop to rooftop, dimly lit in the pale moonlight as they soar ever eastward toward their goal. Firstly, you must keep out of sight and distance yourself from Kabuki Cho. I'm afraid it is you, Ellie, whom these riotous students are after. Mm, no worries, I left a message for Suzuku and the others before I came, telling her to knock some sense into these morons. Though, I kind of wrote a message to them too, and the way I left it, it's impossible to miss. It's not like I carry stationery around, so I had to use what I had on hand, you know. Hey, have you found Ellie yet? What? There's new graffiti on the old bulletin board. Graffiti written in big letters with red lipstick, to be precise, which reads as follows. Got tired of this place, so moving on to another town for a while. Bye bye, hot headed morons. Ellie. <sighs> You've gotta be kidding me! The Kabukichi Academy students are struck dumbfounded by the brazenness of this message, and right behind them. Mm. A figure dutifully records this new development and slips back into the dark of night without a sound. A wise decision. Telecommunications are traceable, and those who wish to follow where they lead can do so with tremendous ease. But lipstick on the bulletin board leaves no trails to tail. Sadly, I do fear you may need to sever all connections with your friends for their safety as well as your own. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just wondering where we're going, though. What have you got up your sleeve, Mr. Kresnik? Well, the first thing on the agenda is to survey the current situation. And the first question is, why was this orchestrated? Is that really such a mystery? I mean, I'm a vampire. This isn't the first time I've been chased around. I've been dealing with people hating and fearing me just for being who I am ever since I was a kid. I suppose that is true. Vampires do not have the best reputations within the public consciousness. Right? So I can't imagine there's any other reason why people would attack me now. It's gotta be the vampire thing. You are correct that you being a vampire is likely the excuse your attackers have granted themselves for hunting you. What bothers me is the method in which you were attacked. Uh, what? You may not realize this, Ellie, but there are numerous ways to eliminate a vampire. So there is someone behind the scenes who created this fervor with the express intent to see you killed. Well, suffice it to say, it would likely have happened by now, as there are more efficient means of accomplishing the task. I don't get it. See, this is why you teachers and I don't get along. Can't you explain it like I'm five? Ellie, as your teacher, it is my job to help my students think for themselves. Oh, we can save that for another time. Put simply, I think there was an ulterior motive behind this attack on you. Which is... Thanks to those students who accosted you, you and I have been driven from Kabukicho. Perhaps getting you out of town was the real motive here? That's pretty far-fetched. You wouldn't have had any proof to back the theory up, would you? Only circumstantial evidence, if that means anything to you. While fighting, did he perhaps notice the figures observing the battle? 
Yeah, I guess I did. They were like, just standing there. So I simply ignored them. You think they are involved? I do. I made a move on them just to see, and could immediately tell they were professionals in the art of subterfuge. I was sure my strike came as a surprise, and yet, I kept calm and easily deflected my attacks before retreating. Krasnik feels around in his pocket to make sure the handkerchief in which he has wrapped the fragment of an enemy he pulled from the battlefield is still there. That means these highly trained professionals of Sutterfuge limited themselves to simply observe and do nothing more. A no attempt was made to stop you from running, which tells me that your escape was the intent all along. Perhaps that it was even expected that I'd be the one to help you. No, no, that's a bit too much of a leap. At any rate, I've gotten in touch with an old friend from a former place of employment, who will be lending us a maid. An old friend? So like, from before you were a teacher? Is it Hogan? Just after I arrived in Tokyo, my experiences helped me land a job assisting the police, the Public Safety Bureau to be specific. Their activities are a bit different from general police work. For one thing, we are mostly up against organized crime. Hey. So he works for the police too. Signed to you. There were exceptions, of course, such as professionals who worked independently towards the destruction of the city. Okay, may maybe never mind. <laughs> I scuffled with such ruffians time and time again, and to tell you this, they put any vampire to shame with their savagery. Though, I digress. And there is Masanori. The team I was assigned to employed a wide variety of people, from every age group, race, and social standing you can think of. And it was a great team. We worked well together, but more importantly, we respected one another's talents. We forged solid bonds of friendship and camaraderie. We loved this melting pot of cultures and swore we'd always protect it. One of my teammates was, like me, invited to join from the private sector of extensive knowledge of psychology. He had the uncanny ability to create a clear and accurate picture of a suspect from even the tiniest piece of evidence. Basically, anything at all the culprit left behind at the scene of the crime could be used to get a firm reading on them. It was like a form of ESP, or more accurately, psychometry. He has the ability to hear the voices of the dead lamenting their grudges, grievances, and regrets. The voices of the dead? I'm sure having an encyclopedic knowledge of criminal psychology helps seal the deal. Why would the culprit seek to destroy society? How have they come to that determination? These were the questions my colleague pondered. I had never seen such tenacious devotion to understanding another psyche. But I am not my colleague. I can't say for sure what the enemy's intent is this time around. When it comes to frontline action, I know what I'm doing but data analysis still falls well outside my purview. So, like they say, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a vampire for a vampire, a mob for a mob, and a pro for a pro. If he can pick the brain out of that old friend of mine, we just might be able to get a clearer picture of what's going on here. Sounds interesting. What's his colleague's name? Oh ho! Ellie, I do believe this is the first time anything I've ever talked about has sparked such curiosity from you. My friend has adopted a different name now, likely as a precaution in case any former enemies are still out there. I knew him as Masanori Daikaku Inumura. He's one of my few old companions still alive today. Ooh. Yep, she's looking for him. Or it is, after the name change, my friend now ekes out a modest living as a live streamer producing psychological content. 
I believe he has a few million followers, though I don't know video streaming well enough to know how good that is. Just the idea of seeing my friend again really takes me back, though. I've changed an awful lot since then. Krusnik takes a moment to consider his homeland, and to think about what his former friends and co-workers might think of him now. Vampires are the very embodiment of what it means for society to break down and be destroyed. They suck blood and spread their contagion, bringing people under the command. In his capacity as an officer of the law, Krusnik hunted down many a vampire in the day. It was because they were vampires that he found their tendencies and proclivities so predictable and was able to so easily track them down. Now here he is, Wrigley is standing at a podium in front of a classroom full of ogres, getting through to no one in particular. He's going to laugh at me, I bet. But that's fine. If he does, he does. The two of them can laugh together at how much they have changed. And as long as they laugh together, everything will be fine. Hey, you want to go check out that cosplay specialty shop by the station, Arathen? It's been some time now since you began hiding out in Akihabara, and on a day like any other, you find yourself chatting with Katoblupas in the usual cafe. I hear they have a sale going on for the cosplay goods I ain't going to need to finish the cost from. Enough to get this finished before the long break from school is over. Alright, it's a date then. I swear, I'm going to do everything in my power to make the best cosplay ever, get this costume finished up, and be recognized as a proper, respectable, full-fledged creator. At that moment, the door to the shop opens, and in comes an unfamiliar face. Welcome back, master! Hmm. Was this not a saloon for talented wordsmiths to congregate? I've been to this establishment in the past, and the atmosphere has certainly changed quite dramatically since then. This establishment is a workspace for many creative individuals. Though, I believe the owner has mentioned something about this place being like what you described before the renovations. Either way, this is still a space for creators to share their ideas. And we have a full cafe menu as well. Do come in. I see. Glad to see it's a place where the exchange of ideas is still prioritized. Some things may change, but not everything. And that person who just came in. Your friend of yours? No, I'm just looking at his outfit. I wonder if he's a cosplayer too. He does have a kind of familiar air to him, though. Uh, I'm gonna go say hi. Maybe the cosplay crew can grow one stronger today. Hey, let me say hi, too. Thanks. I was hoping you'd come with, Arthur. Um, hi. I was just wondering, are you a cosplayer? A what now? Oh, you aren't? I thought for sure you were dressed up as a character from something. I assume perhaps you came here to work on a costume, or maybe because you're looking for a cosplay buddy. Not quite, I'm sorry to say. I'm just meeting an old friend, and thought this would be a nice, nostalgic spot for it. Oh, is that so? I'm so sorry for the mistake then, and sorry to bother you. There's no need for apologies, I suppose, in a way. You might say I am dressed up as someone else. I'm always striving to be like the literary rates of old, if only in the smallest ways. In fact, it may be providential that you've reached out to me, as I am curious about something that perhaps only you can answer. Would you and your fellow companions consider yourselves to be regular customers at this establishment? Uh, yes, we're here a lot. Why do you ask? Ah, you are regular then. Good, good. May I ask then, if you're acquainted with a person named Tindalos? Uh huh? Tindalos? Do you know that name? Um, Tindalos is a member of the Akihabara Guild. You could say he's a VTuber, I guess, with a streaming channel. 
I'm sorry to say, though, that I'm a newer member of the guild, so I haven't had the chance to speak with Team Delos just yet. You're not only a VTuber if you have a rig. And I don't think Team Delos needs one. <laughs> I see, I see. Is it something urgent? I'd be happy to ask someone else for you if you'd like. Oh no, that wouldn't be necessary. I'm a live streamer myself, you see. So I was simply curious about their competition. <laughs> I thought I'd hear a rumor he was based in Akihabara, so I figured it couldn't hurt to ask. That's all. You're a live streamer? Wow. Uh, what kinds of videos do you stream? I'm a small time, I assure you. I go by the name of Muramasa and run a modest channel discussing all matters of psychology. The Candisterian pulls his channel up on his phone and shows it to you. Whoa, is that your follower account? That's a lot of digits. Is that in the millions? Wow, incredible. Yeah, I'll say. There's nothing small time about you at all. The comments visible on the screen all seem to be filled with high praise as well. Along with talk of how this Muramasa can tell the future and read minds with perfect accuracy. It looks like you really are top tier creator. I really admire creative people, you see. Oh, my name is Katobopas, and I hope to become a renowned creator myself someday. I see. Well, Katobopas, I'm sorry to say, but I'm not particularly comfortable with the designation of creator. Huh? But you have all these people watching your videos. Yes, but I'm not creating a thing. I merely analyze existing data and tell my viewers what they want to hear. I'm constantly concerned with how other people perceive me, how I can get those others to accept me, and whom I should imitate to do so. I believe one who cannot do without imitating those who came before should never be considered a creator personally. True creators contribute to the overall artistry of the era with original works. I'm not worthy of such a title. Probably a controversial take. Creators stand alongside the changes the lives of others, as opposed to being among those whose lives are changed. You'd recognize real creativity, the power to influence the lives of others if you saw it. It is a trait that cannot be hidden, no matter how one may try. A breathtaking splendor from which one's gaze cannot be averted. And such splendor is far beyond the reach of one such as I, who merely don the garments of those who inspire me. Yet despite these shortcomings, I simply cannot discard my dream of one day becoming a true author. Oh, pitiful, no. Um, sorry, I, uh... Hold on a second. Huh? Arthen? There's nothing pitiful about you. You want to change yourself. I admire your courage for even trying. And who might you be? Tell me not Arthen. <laughs> oh my god, are you stupid? Okay, whatever. Hmm, fascinating. A Canisarian gazes fixedly into your eyes. Another possessed soul. Unconsciously bearing terrible burdens, no doubt. I am possessed. Ah, uh, I do beg your pardon. I have a habit of talking to myself. You have my apologies if I offended you. Also, it looked as if you were preparing to leave when I arrived. Am I keeping you? The, the events of that uh, dungeon with uh, the invaders <laughs> happened after this chapter, because if it didn't, then we should know who Masanori is. Oh, right, the cosplay sale. I hope they are not sold out. Sorry to cut things short, but I think we're going to get moving, if you'll excuse us. Certainly. It was a pleasure chatting with you. Until we meet again. Hmm. Hello, yes. I'm at the rendezvous site now. Please take your time. I'm happy to wait. See you when you get here, old friend. Ah, how long it's been. I've changed a great deal since those days. 
I've come to know well that one cannot run from their past, and that the future is already decided. Uh, Kona got a picture. Thanks. Say cheese. Ellie. The cosplay event in Akihabara is still very much underway, and a tremendous throng of tourists have once again converged upon the neighborhood. After Kotobupas finishes his shopping, it doesn't take long for you two to find yourselves surrounded by photographers. You over there? Can you do a matching pose? Perfect. Now let me get one too. Uh, sure. What's this? Tell me how you want me. Uh, thank you so much. What a great photo! Thanks for playing along. Hey, you okay, Arthur? Uh, fine. Just a little tired. I understand. It must be pretty exhausting, not knowing when or where someone wanting to do harm may be hiding. Maybe we should cut the photo ops here for the day. Somebody might recognize you if we're not careful. Uh, nah, this is fun. We'd stand out more if we refused. Really? Uh, okay. Is this really alright, though? It's like a total escape from reality. There's just nothing else I can do. You've thus far uncovered neither hide nor hair of the guild masters to the three true guilds. Not even the slightest clue. And on top of that, you haven't been able to get anywhere near Shinjuku Academy or have anything to do with the summoners for quite some time now. You can't help but feel a bit antsy, having accomplished virtually nothing while you simply lie low and try not to get exposed. Arathen? Katobopas stares at you, trying to work up the courage to say something to you and find the right words for it. Finally, he speaks. I just wanted to say... Thank you. Uh, what's this about? You claim there's nothing you can do right now, but I don't think that's true. Your words in the cafe earlier really meant something to me. I just want you to know, I appreciate it. I'm glad to have you here with me. I guess I'm just glad you came to Akihabara. Arthur. Katobopas momentarily turns bright red before smiling and returning your affection in kind. <laughs> that said, isn't it a little strange how the crowd seem to be getting bigger and bigger every single day? A lot of the tourists here don't seem like the sorts of people who'd usually be interested in Kahiabara. Uh-oh. You know what happened last time a bunch of uh, people who didn't belong there decided to crowd in? It was... A uh, shift in majority rule. The main road cutting through Akihabara has been closed to traffic and open to pedestrians, creating a wide thoroughfare that's absolutely teeming with tourists. It's almost out of hand. Hey, no shoving! Narara, today's debut special edition is limited to one per customer. Whoa, look at all that cosplay. Oh, I've got the manga that character's from. How about an Akihabara steam run from the road? Oh, made and fresh. Get them all hot. Among the cacophony of voices, one conversation in particular happens to catch your ear. There's a portal here in Akihabara too, ain't there? So how come our guild ain't gone after it yet? Eh, come to think of it, I've never heard of anybody fighting guild battles here. Well, that's because there's no point, right? Aren't fights for the portals all just one big farce? You mean like that video was saying? The kid from Shinjuku Academy pulling the strings? Uh, that's the one. You seen the latest video? Here, check it out. Uh oh. Uh oh! Whoa. So that's what the kid looks like, huh? No wonder. wonder where he got himself off to. Probably caught up in one of the big guilds and is getting himself a good whooping, I reckon. Hope so. You made a fool of all of us honest people fighting this good fight. If that's what happens, I say. What guild are they from? Are you okay, Arthur? 
<laughs> you're momentarily jostled by the crowd and stagger, losing your balance. In doing so, the headgear portion of your costume comes loose, clearly exposing your face. Great. Ah, my face! Hmm? Wait. I've seen that face somewhere before. What? What is this light? <laughs> Alright, looks like Smokey got to the rescue. The sudden flash is no mere light, but the incandescent beam of a glorious presence. Aura, as some would call it. All eyes are drawn to this mysterious light, as every person presently unconsciously steps aside to clear the way for the figure casting it. Ugh, whatever, it's now or never. Are you all right? You're not hurt, are you? The august figure smiles while helping you up to your feet. That smile could melt even the coldest heart, and the voice behind it could inspire the most downtrodden. Uh, just who might be you be? Me? Simply a super celebrity who happened to be passing by. On my way to save you from this world of suffering. You guys are jumping right into battle. Kokoyori, waga de party time. Kesa party. Neo, Neo, samasugai. Oh wow, it's only one face. Okay, never mind. Tsurite kuru ga ii, nijuku mono dobo. Sore ga shi ni tsuzuke. Ware ra no tama no kagayaki ga tsuyuk, tsuyuk, shikou hasha. Thank you, Smokey. We can help. <laughs> Builders of Shangri-La, Part 3. We have a battle that is <laughs> most likely going to be facing Smokey God. And I believe I was spoiled for this fight, but let us see how it actually works out. Survive for six turns. So if I remember correctly, it's most likely gonna be Smoky God, which means you're not supposed to hit him for that many turns. Maybe. But let's see if I'm completely wrong or not. Oh wait, forgot my boosters. Uh okay, there we go. My old friend. I remember the day we met as though it were yesterday. Ours is a world where the sky extends far beneath the land, a paradise in which the sun never sets as it occupies its throne of splendor in the center of that sky. In that paradise was a golden metropolis known as Iranyapura. And it is there where you demigods, you Ashuras, dwelled. That was where I met you. Where I clashed with you. Together, we discussed and embraced a shared ideology. To eradicate the pain of living from this world, they pledged we would forgive all, and discard all that attaches us to this life. Since making our pledge, you almost ceaselessly fought for our belief. I remember the sight of you swinging that sword, body mottled with wounds. <laughs> However, our shared vision became divided. We each walked our own path to our own interpretation of that ideal. One day, another companion injured a certain girl, and you were overcome with grief and vengeful ire. You could not discard those feelings. 
A fierce, tragic war broke out among my old friends. And in the end, you turned your back on our ideology entirely and were driven from our world. Those who cannot shed their attachments, instead of choosing the path of endless war, fall to the land of the Ashuras, the realm of strife. The fate of those who fall is set. They are to be part of the endless cycle of death and rebirth, subject to eternal reincarnation and ceaseless fighting. The shadow of my bitter regret haunts me ever since those days of my youth. Well now, look what the cat dragged in. It's been a long time, my old friend. It has? Much too long. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Everything about these two is as different as can be. From their age to their worlds of origin, yet the two of them once worked together like a well-oiled machine to help safeguard the city. They pat each other on the shoulders, call each other friend, and pick up right where they left off. <laughs> the way you've dressed, it seems pretty clear you've never given up on perfecting that written word, eh? <laughs> Nothing gets past you, it seems. Yes. That part of me is much the same as ever, if nothing else. Never would I have guessed you'd become an instructor, however. I wish I could tell this particular nugget to my younger self. Well, despite the change of profession, I'm still caught in some pretty heavy fighting. I'd like to introduce you to someone. Her name is Ellie. She's a student at my school. And as you may already be aware, she's a vampire. Just like me. I see. And I thought your profession was surprising, but here you are harboring one of your own kind. Allow me to introduce you as well, Ellie. This is the old friend I was told you about, who helped me uphold public order back in the day. So you're Masanori Daikaku Inamura? Ellie? Revolutionary thinker of the invaders, the southern of the three true guilds. And a puppeteer of souls. Oh, she's informed. Oh, of course she would be. This was told in my uh, Tadatoma, of course. Remember, this information is payment due for the help you provided. We're even now. Ellie carefully recalls the exact intel provided to her by Tanatomo Keno Inusaka of the Warmongers. I presume you already know this Tokyo has been looping countless times already, no? We three true guilds task ourselves with gathering and storing memories from past loops. The value of these memories is not up for debate. Data acquisition is the very foundation of all effective systems. By analyzing how situations played out previously, extrapolating projections for the current loop is a simple task. Indeed, virtually every guild regards memories of previous loops in one form or another, to be a desirable combat resource. And for the last several loops, the invader's strategy has largely followed a very similar trajectory. To share a highly limited selection of privileged information with the populace, transforming them into unwitting vanguards. Putting it in his historical terms, they are attempting to coax the general public into becoming revolutionaries. Ah, that's the name. Memories of past loops, you see, are generally managed by the world representatives. Even the higher ranks within the three true guilds only have limited access to these memories. That includes me, so all I can tell you about the person you seek is this. Masanori Daikaku Inumura belongs to the invaders, and therefore should be regarded as always acting on their behalf. And his mission, it would seem, is to create an army of well-meaning aggressors for his revolutionary fight. There's a lot I need to ask you about, but let's start with the big one. 
Were you the ones who pit everyone from Kabuki Show Academy against me? Answer. Now. <laughs> oh, that's a good thing. Ellie kept it, her mouth shut the entire time. <laughs> Until now. M Masanori? So straight to the chase, too. <laughs> My, my. I imagine I'd be able to dodge the question, or at least make up a convincing excuse, were I one of the genuinely talented. Why did I never be able to get away with that in front of my old friend? Ellie, was it? You are correct. I am Masanori Daikaku Inumura, and I belong to the Invaders, one of the three true guilds. I am a member of the faction responsible for the riotous aggressions and Kabuki show that you've come to discuss. None who behold the figure that appeared amid the chaos can now avert their eyes. His overwhelming sense of presence, his inescapable aura, naturally becomes the center of attention for everyone in the crowd. Perhaps it's the refined way in which he carries himself, or perhaps it's his wistful gaze, but not a soul present as impervious to his wiles. My apologies, but would you please let us through? One by one, the figure respectfully makes the same request to every person in the area. Sure, no problem! And just like that, each and every person immediately honors the figure's request, graciously stepping aside to clear a pass down to the center of the street. Any and all disorder turning in the crowd up to this point has completely and utterly dissipated as everyone stands at attention. Uh, um... What do you mind telling us your name? We'd like to know what to call you. Please. I'm sorry, but I'm currently traveling incognito. Though I suppose. In the past, there was a certain stranger who called me Smoky God. You get the distinct impression that he's not just giving this name to satisfy the spectators who asked for it, but specifically to introduce himself to you as well. Smoky God. That's your name? Everyone halt! What's going on here? Why are all of you clustered around this spot? Oh dear. I believe it's time we make our exit. Can you run, Arathen? We should distance ourselves from here before the uproar begins anew. We wouldn't want to get your companions caught up in this. Smoky God offers his hand to you, fluidly and gently. Uh, do you know my name? Actually, that can wait. Yeah. This should be far enough. That was a close call, though to be sure. Thank you for saving me. The question is, why? I didn't, for the fact is, you are not yet saved. Eerily, Smoky God says this while maintaining the very same gentle smile he's been wearing on his face since he first appeared. Uh, what do you mean? I have been anticipating renewing my friendship with you. Though I suppose this is our first meeting from your perspective. I know much about you. I've known you since long, long before this cycle. What did you say? By all rights, I should not tell you this, but I believe I owe you this much. I am a higher ranking member of the invaders. His smile somehow widens as he says this but continues to exude an absolute pure affection that you imagine must be lighting up every dark corner in the world behind you. It's a smile big enough to find a home in the empty spaces of every heart, then go on to heal them. The compassion within this single gesture can invade and conquer the anxiety that lives in those spaces, and unite all the people of the world as one with its abject selflessness. 
In fact, I am the world representative of Shangri-La, and my designation is indeed Smoky God. Come forth. Bound this tail. Let me promise you one thing. I do not intend to interfere with you at this time and in this place. I do beg you heed this warning though. If you do not concede the fight, that sword of yours will only serve to hurt you. For it is your will to fight that stands to injure you the most, just as it has before. さあ、そうそう始めるぜ。しっかりついてこいよ。で、目を覚ますのに。で、がかりもらった。美容会して、がかりもらった。目を覚ましてください。How for voting? Yeah, this is the quest where you do nothing. <laughs> but I will say I am morbidly curious of what happens if you hit him, so let's uh, find out soon. <laughs> let's do it! Oh, that's it. That's what I was expecting. Yeah. Sudoi, Sandai Gildo, no use touch you. Let it. It is no big deal, even if you do hit him. I don't know what people are complaining about. I've seen a lot of uh, people in the help channel and the Switch over linked in the description. I wonder how they can beat this quest. <laughs> What's so hard about it? I don't get it. You really didn't do that much damage either. <laughs> okay, I don't care, but whatever. <laughs> you swing your sword over and over again, but not a single strike lands on Smoky God. I'm whiffing every single time. It's like I'm attacking Snoke. Perhaps you know this, perhaps not. But your sword is incapable of striking world representatives such as myself. What? I didn't realize that. I'm pretty sure we struck a few people already, um, like Shiva or something. Either way, it would be wise not to even try to hit me at all. Lest the bodyguard watching my back determine you to be a threat. All right, that's it. No Salmon. You're right, Master. We're doing double dragon. Your ache fired off on my mark. Ah, double dragon. I have heard of it. I would suggest not being too hasty, however. Say you are to cut me down. Would the recoil of that act not leave you unable to move? I am not your sole enemy. Wouldn't you think another may be waiting in the wings for just such an opportunity to strike? Stop trying to worm out of this. I'll grant you my patience and say this as many times as I must. I want you to calm down. I will not harm you. I knew that if I were to meet with you, combat would be inevitable. It was the same in previous cycles. But it is absolutely not the intention of the invaders, nor mine, for whatever that may be worth, to put you in harm's way. 
Not your plan to put me in harm's way. I for was forced out of my school. Everyone turned against me. And yet, here you are in a relatively safe location with me, alive and well. Akihabara is designed to be a neutral space, free of guild battles, as per the Akihabara Guildmaster's policy. What are you saying? You mean I was led here? I have seen many a cycle, and I seek to spare you from the suffering of the inevitable game over. In most cycles, the harbinger of that end has been your death. And when you pass, the cycle will repeat anew, an outcome we would all prefer to avoid. Hmm. Okay, this is good confirmation from the from the dungeon stories. What we saw was there was a coincidence between our death and the looping of the world, the resetting rather. But it didn't happen for all of the dungeon stories, just uh, I believe one or two of them. So this is a good confirmation that our death is indeed causing the loops and uh, necessarily causes loops, but it's also not the only thing that may cause loops. As for what the exact trigger is, it's still a question. Therefore, some have conspired to distance you from the turmoil of the guild battles. As if you weren't involved. Each of the world representatives interprets past cycles a bit differently, forming disparate predictions. Even within the invaders, there is much dispute. Some predictions overlap. Well, some outcomes fall outside all forecasts. It may be of little comfort, but I have elected to prioritize your safety. That is the hand I've chosen to play here. I am of relatively noble birth, you see, which grants me not just talent and beauty, but considerable wealth as well. I have thus been able to hire professionals who specialize in performing within chaos to watch over you from the shadows, sound to you. I do not expect to receive your gratitude for this act, of course. I merely have done it upon my own whim. I told you before that I've come to save you from this suffering, but in point of fact, no one person may ever truly save another. We must all forge our own salvation. One who leaps into a dangerous fight of his own volition is someone beyond my ability to save. And yet, saving you is what I wish to do. Have I made this clear to you, Arathen? Right now, safety is guaranteed here in Akihabara. If you remain here, you will not be harmed. I would even be willing to stay with you this time, if it would ease your troubled mind to have me nearby. Safety is guaranteed. For whom? All this to save me and only me. Hmm. What happens to everyone else if I stay? What of my classmates and friends? And everyone from the other schools? I cannot make any promises regarding others. This Tokyo is a bit too big for me to safeguard it alone. And though I could delegate others to protect your friends in my stead, I couldn't offer no guarantees on their behalf. Plus, knowing you, I'm sure you would insist that the designated protectors be protected as well, no? Of course you would. I needn't even have asked. My old friend within you was similarly consumed heart and soul with fighting for the sake of others. Though I suppose we world representatives are much the same. Consumed heart and soul was remorse for things past. I too am consumed by the endless cycle of war and the regrets of youth. Masanori Daikaku Inumura. We've been friends for a long time. 
We fought through so much together. But if you're saying you've harmed my students, then I'm afraid we will have to come to blows. Why have you sold your soul to terrorists? We fought side by side against such people. Think back to those days. Nice jamboree music. Oh, my old friend, you wish to know why I've sold my soul. Because I've come to believe this revolution is for the best. But then, history has always recorded revolutions that succeeded as good and just, and those that fail as evil and corrupt. And for every life lost in one, another is saved. Can you truly say you would not do the same if you knew the outcome? Would you not choose the best future every time? There is no mystery here. I threw my hat in the ring because every data set, every calculation, told me I should. That's exactly the sort of thing the terrorists we took down would always say. It seems we will not see eye to eye on this matter, so there is no point in discussing it further. If you'll excuse me. Wait, now old friend, do you really think we're just gonna let you leave? The distinctive click of a gun cocking rings out from Krisnik's side, punctuating this question. I am at a disadvantage, it seems. My specialty lies in logistical support, so I would be no match for a frontliner such as you. But as I said, I can see the future. Wouldn't you think I've anticipated and planned for this exact scenario? Hmm. They seem to be better trained than the ones on Kabuki Show. Krisnik quickly and accurately assesses the skill of their assailants, who apparently had been able to keep their presence hidden from his perception this whole time. If you want to dance, I am prepared. The question is, how many of this establishment's patrons can you protect from harm? Ugh. <laughs> and so, you pull back. Chalk up another accurate prediction for me. Allow me to give you a parting gift, though, before I leave. I think it best that you know about the future of this world. Masanori then flicks a business card in Krisnik's direction, with a URL printed on it. I do hope you appreciate that I went through the effort of having this printed. You'll find the same answers there I did. I don't care what kind of information this site may offer, Masanori. I will never condone your ways! Star Wars transition. I want to protect the people dear to me, so I will not let things go your way. As you wish, even with that being the case, I swear to you, I will strive to bring you salvation. Though there is something you should know, old friend, about the system that drives this world. The system that drives this world of Tokyo. Interesting. We usually hear the systems of other worlds. Do you recall what I said before? About why I even led here and... Why this town, Akihabara, is a safe haven for you. The lack of guild battles here. The Akihabara Guildmaster's policy. Is there something significant there? There will come another day when I will face you like this. And when that day comes, I will be obliged not to hold back. But for now, I bid you a fond farewell, my old friend.